Hello and welcome everyone to the third part of this tutorial in Abacus where we are going to model this uh, assembly that you see in front of you. So thus far in the first two tutorials we created well the first part and the second video we created the other two parts by editing or copying and editing the first one and creating the pin. In this tutorial we are going to assemble this thing together so we can perform analysis analyses on that okay so let's jump into it okay so in my f abacus file we have our hinge with the hole our hinge without the hole and the pin now we want to create instances and oriented orientate them and constrain them as needed okay so first steps first just as a bit of background, you can have multiple instances of the same part, which is uh, nice in Abacus. And the part that is in the instance um, can be edited and all instances of that part will be updated. So for example, if you want to um, change the geometry of a part, you can go back to parts and change the sketch or edit the sketch or whatever. And then the all instances of that part will also be updated in your analysis model. So that's quite nifty. Okay. So let's go to uh, assembly where we are going to create instances of all our parts. Okay, and we're going to go in this case we're only going to create uh, a single instance of each of each part. Okay. So expand assembly, double click on instances, then this m menu pops up. And we are firstly going to create an instance of hinge hole. You'll see then it shows us where it's going to be placed. If we select hinge solid as well, it's going to be placed over that. So that's not ideal. And the pin is all going to be in the same place. Okay. So first things first, we're going to click hinge hole. And then we're going to click apply. Because we are not clicking OK, because then we have to reopen the create instance um, option. Okay, so now we have our hinge hole and the part is created, or the instance of the part is created. So now we want to create the instance of the solid hinge piece, so you cl click hinge solid. And what is nice is Abacus allows or gives us the option to uh, auto offset from other instances, which is nice. So now it's auto offset from each other. Oh, one thing I've missed is instance type. You can have dependent or independent instances, which all well, the abacus gives you the difference. If it's dependent, you can mesh the part, or if it's independent, you mesh the instance. That's pretty much the difference. I like to mesh my parts, well, for no specific reason. I just prefer that. Okay, so that's hinge solid. So now we can click OK or apply. Let's just click OK for now because we are first. I want to rotate everything into place before we uh, add the pin. So it's rather, it's I find it easier in Abacus to do things step by step than it is to get everything there and then you know move more things around than needed. Okay, so we're going to click OK. We're going to close the box and there is our instances. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to uh, well rotate the second instance that we get this uh, geometry which is depicted in this picture all right so how do we do that well we can well you can we can rotate and move instances around and that's what we're going to get into doing now um, what you can do if these yellow lines irritates you just to FYI we can go to view assembly display options and which brings up this menu and you can go to datum if I'm not mistaken and then you can show no datums and apply that which removes all these things you just sometimes when you have so many datums and whatever it can get quite uh, uh, messy Okay, so I'm going to remove the datums. Now we can just see our pieces, and now we can get to moving them around. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to keep the position of just the one and rotate and orientate this one to match that. Okay. So to position, we can we have various options. 
as you can see in Abacus there is options to translate instance, rotate, translate to merge or cut instances or create constraints parallel by face. Long click if there's if there's a little bit of a triangle in the corner of a menu button you can long click on it and then there's different options that pops up and that's just different constraints you can apply to position your instances. To position the solid the solid hinge piece we are first constrain the solid inch piece that the two flanges face each other so we can either go there sorry and click constrain face to face or we can go another option is to go to constraint and select face to face just to give you an idea of what these different uh, options are is parallel to face is the movable instance moves until the two selected faces are parallel which pretty self-explanatory. Face to face is it moves it until the two selected faces are parallel and a specific clearance from each other so we can specify the distance between um, different well between faces that is constrained. Uh, parallel edge movable instance moves until two selected edges are parallel. Edge to edge is it aligns two edges with the specified distance. Uh, coaxial Movable instance moves until two faces are coaxial, so when the ax the axes are um, well coincident, and then coincident points are movable instance moves until two selected points are coincident, and parallel coordinate systems um, is the final option. Okay, so to position all inch piece, we are going to select face to face. We are going to select this face. You can see Abacus highlights the face that you select. We're going to select this face. And we are going to also select a plan of face or datum plane of fixed distance. So you want to select this face second. And you can see arrow, Abacus shows you directional arrows. And it displays lead, uh, the red arrows, which um, indicates the direction. Uh, we want to change the direction of the arrows. We can click flip, and now they are going to be well moved together. And now, when we click OK, you'll see it asks for a distance from the fixed plane along this normal. So we want a distance of 0 0.04 that will remain between the two parts, and we can click or press enter and boom now it looks like this let me just rotate a bit around so we can see a bit better okay so now our parts are pretty much as we want them to be this the 0 0.02 well 0 0.04 distance is from that face to there which is nice and you'll see abacus just constrained the two faces okay now the next step let me just zoom out a bit will be to rotate the one. So the next step we're going to do is we want to align the two flange holes. Yeah, yeah. Just as a side note, because yeah, the position of instances usually requires quite a number of uh, movements or constraints to get them to align correctly. So that was the first step. We aligned the faces. Now we are going to, in the next step, uh, constrain the two well, align the two flange holes. So we want to go to constraint. I'm going to select coaxial, and we're going to select the flange hole. Now just to make things a bit more clear, let's switch our view to wireframe, so we can select that hole, so we can see it clearly. And the next. Um, thing we want to select is this hole and you can see just let me rotate a bit Abacus shows us an error that, that hole is uh, indicating that direction and this hole indicates in that direction uh, which is what we don't want so we can uh, flip it again let me just exit the rotation so we can flip our arrows so the one arrow is going to go in and they are going to align according to these two arrows. So the arrows are going to be like that and like that, which is in essence going to flip our two parts. 
or flip this part so that the arrows go inside with one another. Okay, so now we're gonna click OK and zoom. Just turn wireframe off or just turn back on shaded. Now our two parts are there, but as you can see, they are a little bit cutting into each other at this stage, which is uh, not ideal. Well, we will get to that soon, but uh, you can see how the second um, constraint aligned the holes perfectly uh, to each other. It also rotated the instance. Okay, so that's that for that step. So now the next and the last thing we need to do is uh, to align the edges to each one another. So what we can we do? We can go constrain uh, edge to edge, and we want to constrain this edge to that edge, and the arrow directions looks fine and you can see they are um, in the same direction so this these two lines are going to be aligned so that is brilliant so we can click OK no need to flip the lines and it aligned the two edges for us by moving the parts well the one part out and that is all we need to do to get these two parts uh, aligned properly you can also use translate and rotate as you need to they are as I've said for assemblies there are various different ways and means of doing it so I would suggest maybe play around with different options and see what works best for you okay so now this part is uh, assembled the next bit we are going to do is put the pin in okay so let's get to doing that I'm just gonna ex ex exit the uh, rotate view Okay, so first things first, we need to create the pin. Okay, so we go back to instances, double click on it, and it creates an instance from part. We want to select the pin, and we don't want to auto offset. In this case, you can. If you want to remove it, move the pin from there, I'm not going to use it for now, so we are going to do that. Okay, dependent, and that's it. Now our pin is there, and you can see our reference point that we created is also there. So now I'm going to constrain the pin to um, lie along the same axis uh, as the two flanges. So you go to constraint, coaxial, and we want to align the pin to align on the same axis as the two flangels. So we're going to constrain select the conical face of the movable instance. So we're going to move the pin to the inside of either of the flange holes or of the hinge holes. So select that, ding. And the direction that it's going to put the pin in is irrelevant. So you can flip it and the pin's going to go this way and that way. Just to show you, well, you're not going to see a difference if I flip it or not. I'm going to keep it in that direction and say OK and boom our pin is now see, just rotate and show you our pin is now there. Now we just need to pull the pin through. OK so what we want to do now is we want to figure out how far we need to move the pin. So we can go to tools query and then the query menu pops up. We want to query distance between two nodes. So we want to query the distance between the pins, the end of the pin and the outer edge of the centers. Let me just rotate so we can see all our points. So we are done rotating. So the first point we want to see is the edge of the pin, which is that point, and the outer uh, point of the uh, hinge. I hope that's the point of the pin. Let's just see. Looks to me like the point of the pin. You can see the pin as the line that goes straight through. So and that's that circle. So yeah. So the pin has that line, the pin is the part where that line goes all the way through. Or does it? I'm lying to you. The pin has the reference point, right? 
So that's going to be the edge of the pin. So we want to pick that point. Okay, then I'm going to do distance again. So just to make sure, we want to pick that point and the outer face of the edge. And then abacus distance is 11.419. Uh, and that gives us the X and the Y component and the Z component. So we are interested in the Z component because you can see these parts are aligned in the Z direction. So now we can move up in uh, 0 0.001 yes to align the outer edge of the pin to that line over there. But remember, we want to uh, center the pin, so I'm going to split that into two uh, translates, so just to illustrate it. So we're going to go to Instance, Translate, uh, select the Instance to Translate, I want to translate the pin, and also uh, select the start point or the vector, which is the translation vector X, Y, and Z. So, uh, we also could have done uh, selecting the start point. So, you can click that point and that point. Then that point would be translated, well, to that point, which would also technically rotate up. But, but now, we just want to translate it 0 0.01. Let me just double check. Yeah, 0 0.01. And that's it. And an endpoint for the translation vector. Oh, sorry, I got it wrong. It needs a start vector and an end vector. So we obviously want the distance to be the correct one. Okay, sorry, apologies for that. Go back to translate, select the pin. So the start vector is going to be a zero vector. We want to go. We want to go from zero to zero point zero one, and boom! Now our pin is aligned to the edge, which is wonderful. But we want our pin to be in the middle of this assembly. So to get it in the middle, I'm going to go to tools query again distance. So I want to query the distance between the edge of the pin and the edge of that face, which is we are interested in Z, so that's 0 0.02 meters. So I want to translate this pin halfway in the Z direction again to center it on the um, assembly. Okay, so we're going to pretty much repeat what we've just done. So we're going to go to translate instance can also go to instance translate so it's the same thing we just did from 0 to 0 0.01 in the positive z direction and that should do it okay let's just have a look so now our pin is slap bang in the middle and I think our part um, assembly is now as we need it to be Okay, so one last thing we need to do after we've done all the positioning is we need to tell Abacus we need to convert all our position constraints to absolute positions. So what Abacus currently knows is it remembers the translations and the well constraints that we do, we've applied. So now we just want to tell Abacus that this is what we want and we need to convert it to absolute positions. So we can go to Instance, Convert Constraints and select the instances to convert the constraint and we want to select all of them so it and click done so now Abacus has converted all the constraints to um, absolute positions so now Abacus doesn't remember the constraints we've applied now it remembers just the positions the instances are currently in that's an important step otherwise moving things around it's not gonna um, necessarily behave as you want it to so at this point, it's a good idea to save your model. 
and yeah so this is what we wanted to do for this tutorial so the next video we are going to focus on creating our analysis steps and adding loads and boundary condition stuff to that so uh, thank you very much for watching this tutorial to create the instance and the assembly the instances and the assembly my apologies and yeah um, stay tuned for the next part thank you very much for watching again and have a lovely day further